in the club, someone asked me, Hey, you smell great. Are you ovulating? Wait, huh? what? Hi, Seiso. Hey, Tizura. And I'm Jermaine. And welcome back to another episode of Clamity's Hush Podcast. Today, we're all in red and white, not because it's National Day that's happening in a week's time, but because today's topic leans towards the idea of danger. And when we think of danger, we think of the colour red. Yeah. We're dressed like sirens. <laughs> <laughs> when we think of the colour red, it also, you know, it's kind of a wild colour mm-hmm. to be wearing. And today, we're going to think about all the wild conversations <gasps> we've Hurt or overheard from friends, families, back in school, strangers. And we're also going to talk about the beauty of unexpected conversations and conversely, the risk of talking to strangers. Mm -mm. I feel like usually I'm the one saying this wild stuff. No, I think people like to confide in Azura. So Uh she has a lot of this, like her mind, right, is a treasure trove of crazy shit people have told her. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so Azura, off the top of her head, what's one of the wildest conversations you've engaged in? Hmm, okay. I think if it's someone I know, there's a lot. I need a story thing. <laughs> but Just a summarized version. Off the version. top of my mind, right? Okay. It's a conversation that I had with a stranger overseas of which he basically never knew of the existence of someone and he was about to go see this person <gasps> for the first time. A child! Stay tuned! <laughs> okay. So mine is actually back in school days. One of our schoolmates told me that the teacher had broken the law. Oh my god, I thought broke yeah. Okay, okay, broken, broken the law. The law okay. In a very bad way. Oh my god. Yeah. Okay, I'm just gonna toss out two keywords. Sure. Okay. Mince meat. Ew. 24 hours behind bars. Huh? This is a crazy story that one friend just told me. He stole bar Tommy and then he was sent to jail. You're not too far? You're oh. not too far? <laughs> I'll tell you more later, okay? But right okay. now, what are some of the wild conversations we've seen online? I think this is crazy, okay? Mm. So this happened back in school, okay? This person, he says during his last term of secondary two, all the boys were gathered playing among us since they had nothing to do after their exams, right? Then this person sat us down and told the whole group that he basically had sex with another girl in the cohort. Okay. And he wanted to ask the boys for help because he thought the condom might have been broken. They did it at the staircase at 3, 4 a.m. in the morning. Wow. Yikes. Well, that's a conversation to remember. Actually, yeah. (laughs) How does a condom break? If it's very old or you've left it in like, you know, your bag for too long. But you physically see it break. I guess it leaks. Yeah, after the deed is done and then like you remove it and you realise, yeah, It's like dripping out. Oh, Oh, that's lit. I have a really bad one that I heard back in school. I I don't know. The boys need to come clean on this because I don't know if this is true. But this was true back in my school. Okay. So the boys would have a running competition during class, like whatever, Chinese class, math class. <sighs> this is kind of gross, like, okay? Fair warning. To see who can ejaculate <gasps> without actually touching themselves before the class ended. This is true. This happened how did in my you do that? And, and how did you know about that? Oh, because my guy friend told me. Oh my gosh. Yeah. How do you do that? I don't think that's the question <laughs> here. <laughs> okay? <laughs> But wow! Cannot. Cannot. <laughs> the only guy in the room is shooting at these. <laughs> <laughs> Can it be done, actually? Oh, uh, he's shrugging, he's, he's like, shrugging. Like, like, That's wild! But okay, of course, these conversations are not just limited to school, right? So, Zura, tell us about this story. So, this is a conversation that I had with a stranger. And for some reason, it happened like more than 10 years ago. But I remember until today, very, very clearly. Mm-hmm. So, basically, I just landed in London. I was trying to get back to Nottingham. Usually, I take a train. But I think I booked last minute. It was new. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> I had no train to take. So I had to take a bus. It was my first time taking a bus back Nottingham. So I had gotten on the bus and then trying to get comfy, you know, it's like a three hour ride or something. And then there's a guy, a white guy, a middle aged, maybe 40s behind me. Mm. So then he asked if I knew where the USB port was. And I was like, oh, I'm not sure. And then he asked me like, because Nottingham is a small town. Like nobody goes there on holiday, okay? Yeah. So he was like, oh, where are you going? I was like, oh, I'm going back to school. I was like, oh, what about you? So he's, like, he's American. And he said... I am about to meet my daughter that I never knew existed. (gasps) She's 16. You guessed it, a child. And I was like, what the hell? I was like, how did you find out 16 years later that you have a daughter in fucking Nottingham? And he was like, one day this girl reached out to him on Facebook and said, I think you might be my dad. (gasps) Facebook? Whoa. 10 years ago. Yes. Okay. And so he got into this conversation, asked her to get the test done so after everything he was like 
okay, if like I'm really your dad, I'll come and see you lah. And then they did the test and it was true. <gasps> so he was going there to see her for the first time. Wow. Well, this is wild. Okay, few questions mm. here. Number one, I want to know how that went. Mm. Obviously, you never, because you never uh, yeah. saw him again. Yeah. And number two, why is he telling it to a stranger on the plane? On the bus. On the uh, bus. On the bus. I guess he was just too excited. Like, after 16 years, you're finally meeting your daughter. That you never knew existed. I eh? know. <laughs> wow. One day, you're single, but makes your daddy to a 16-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, what about your story, Jimmy? Mine is very... It's very short mm-hmm. and not so sweet. So basically, our schoolmate told us, this was like post-secondary school, but he had revealed to us that while he was in secondary school, he he, he slept with his teacher. And then his teacher gave him a Rolex watch. Wow. Huh? Yeah. This is here in Singapore? Yeah. How did that end up? Like, they're not in contact no, anymore? No, no, they're not mm-hmm. in contact it's anymore. It's a one-time thing. But he was 15 there. Mm. And the teacher was probably like, what, 30s? Mm. I'm very confused. Why? I'm very confused. Like, you can't believe this yeah. shit happens here in Singapore. Mm. Apparently it does. I'm curious about his intention, your friend. Yeah. Did he do it willingly or because he I mean, felt as, forced? As a 15-year-old boy, I think you're not old enough to maybe not know the full consequences of it. Oh. The prefrontal cortex haven't developed for No, exactly. Mm. So there's probably some trauma that he has to work through. Okay, that's not to say. I don't want to get anyone in trouble. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, so my story. I was having a conversation with a friend the other day and he told me this like, wild ass story about how he was shopping in the supermarket and you know people in the industry we are constantly on our phones we're so busy firing email replies and texts right so he had a shopping cart full of groceries we're talking mincemeat we're talking rice water and he was texting on his phone and he just subconsciously pushed the entire trolley out of the supermarket without paying. He didn't even realise he was out of the supermarket. Okay. By the time he did, it was because a security guard had tapped him on the shoulder and said, Sir, you did not pay. Oh no. And he immediately was like, Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't realise I was on my phone. But the security guard would not let him go. (gasps) He said he was stealing. He didn't want to let him go. He wanted to take him to the office basically. And my friend got a bit frustrated because he was like, it was an actual mistake. Yeah. And he even showed the security guard his bank account. Look, I have money. It's not like I have no money in my bank. I'm going to run away. I can pay for this. Let me pay for it. Let me go. But the security guard said, no, you are stealing. And even the supermarket manager came. She didn't say a thing, you know. Maybe the manager was new. Lah. The manager let the security guard do whatever he wanted to do. And in the end, they kept him in the office, called the police. The police came down, took down his details, brought him back to the station. Before the police brought him back, they still ask my friend, uh, so do you do you still want your things? <laughs> my friend was like, of course no lah, I'm never coming back to this supermarket. That's it. They brought him back, put him behind bars. <gasps> he stayed the entire night. Oh and he said God. that was one of the worst nights of his Are life because kidding? in the bar, it's smelly. There's no fan. There's only a ventilation. There's a toilet bowl. And he says he didn't even dare to use the toilet bowl because when you flush the water, instead of going down, right, the water comes out. Oh God, disgusting. <laughs> <And he's> like, <laughs> After this, who would want to use the toilet bowl? He couldn't sit down because there's no chair. He refuses to lie down because it's just so gross. And the worst thing is there's no clock in the cell. So he does not know how much time has passed. His phone was confiscated. Oh my god. And he could only wait till the next day when the office opened again before he could call up his friend to come and bail him out. And he was like, oh for some means meat and some groceries. After hearing this story, Uh. I'll never commit a crime (laughs) because that sounds really horrendous. But from the security guard's point of view, I feel like many people could have said that to him before. Mm. Like they've shoplifted and then they got caught and then they were like, no, 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 I just forgot to pay. Correct, but if right? you want to shoplift, you would have taken more expensive items like wine, whatever. Not, you never know. Some people, like, especially people with money, right? Like, that's why he, when he showed his bank account, it didn't face the security guard. Because I feel like some rich people just steal for fun. Really? Yeah. But if you steal, would you put everything in the shopping cart and like just roll out of the supermarket like that? Sometimes it's like broad daylight, you know? The more really? obvious it is, the <laughs> like better the kind of crime, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I don't know, well. but anyways, poor, <laughs> I, poor friend. It's yeah. insane eh? Yeah. I would like to share another story since I'm a treasure trove, right? Yeah. Okay. Very similar to Hades. Uh-huh. Mm. It has inspired me. Mm. Okay, my friend was on the way to somewhere and was going to meet his friend. So at the meeting point, there was a uh, Singapore Fools. Okay. okay. So they said, ah, let's buy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So they went in to buy. And then on the counter, 
they saw a ticket. His friend picked it up and then they looked at it and realised that it was dated for, I think, the day before or the last draw date, basically. Right. And that was the winning number. Oh! No, so someone had won. Went there and like won and like exchanged for money. So like. they looked at it and they were like, eh? If it's a winning ticket, why would it be here? So they said, never, never mind. Let's just try it out. So they are already there, right? So they took that ticket. They went to the counter. Oh my god. <laughs> Stupid fellas. <laughs> Okay. They went to the counter. The fella looked at it and said, eh? Okay, but because it's first price, it's too big a price. You can't claim it there. You gotta claim it at the HQ. Oh my gosh. So, okay, you take, you go to HQ. You go and collect there. <laughs> then they were like, fuck, let's scrap our plans. <laughs> let's go to the HQ and collect some money. Because <laughs> they were like, at this point, they're like, oh my god, it's legit. Because uh-huh. she didn't say anything. So they went. Uh-huh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> they went, they gave, the person looked at it and said, Please hold on. Uh oh. And went behind. Uh, uh. Okay. Somebody else came up <laughs> and said, "This is yours." She said, "Yeah." <laughs> well, technically, he picked it up, so it's his. Yes. Okay. Okay. Please hold on. <gasps> they go to the bank again. <laughs> <laughs> out comes security guys. Oh no. Or like Cisco, or like whatever it is, right? And they're like, "This is yours." So yes. Oh. It's two idiots. So fellas are like, "Please come with us." <laughs> I have a guess. Okay. It's a counterfeit. But let's see. No, my guess is somebody already exchanged that but left the ticket there. But why would it be at the outlet? Okay, never mind. So it's a counterfeit. <gasps> and the person who had basically altered a number, I think it was like, you know when it was like 0 or 8 or whatever where you can add a bit? So it was basically one number that was altered. And so obviously the person who had altered it or doctored it tried to claim and cannot. So like, obviously you know what you did, right? So you okay, let it go. But this fellas don't know. Ah. But apparently it was really well done. Like, <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> they got taken to the police station and they spent a night there. No! I want to know what you think if you're listening. If you were the one who picked that up and you didn't know it was fake, right? And it looked so real. Would you have done the same? I would have tried my luck. Eh? <laughs> I would have tried that. Eh? What the A? Eh? Eh. Can I claim my prize or not? Eh? Call me from the police station. I'll come get you. <laughs> no, like, you won't even pick up your phone. I'll call Joby. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. Please call me. Okay. That's insane. Here's the next wild story, okay, by someone online. She found out that her uncle was so at birth by a grand aunt, but thankfully, he's still kind of within the wait, family. Wait, 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 wait. What? Yeah. Her uncle was swapped at birth. Swapped at birth? By a grand aunt. Oh my gosh. Huh? Okay, but swapped at birth, but still within the the family lah. Okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> Imagine you and your cousin, you're swapped. Yeah, that's what she's saying, but still we didn't like. That's still quite... Why? The Wait, family tree, okay. you know? Um, her dad was also almost swapped as well because her grandma wanted a girl after trying six times. Oh my gosh. Wow. I love Early family 90s. drama, honestly. By the way, yeah, this has reminded me, did you know, I just learned this recently, did you know that a paternity test or a DNA test can be done before a child is born? I never knew! Oh, I never knew that either. Oh. I just learned this! Cool. So while the fella is pregnant, <laughs> you can get it done. A DNA test. But how? I like, don't know. Ah. The mother's hair? No, no, no. no the father. Uh-huh. And then you you swab it? What do you take? I'm not sure. Interesting. But I just learned this. Good and to know. You can do it here as well. Okay, okay. For you all viewers it. who need that information, mm. for there so you all go. All the soon-to-be fathers who don't know if it's your child. No, <laughs> I don't know how many percentage of those people <laughs> are listening daddy. to us. Yeah. I feel like the craziest stories sometimes are things that you either overhear mm-hmm. or strangers tell you. Because mm-hmm. when it's a stranger, no barriers. They have nothing to mm. lose, yeah. right? They don't know you. They'll never see you again. This one came online. In the club, this is a female writing. Someone asked me, Hey, you smell great. Are you ovulating? Wait, huh? what? Bro, that's disgusting. <laughs> like, you mean? First a of all, I asked her that. Yeah. First Wait, of all, when you're ovulating, you have do a you different smell scent. better when you're ovulating? Is it a thing? How do I smell today? <laughs> I think I'm ovulating. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's insane. Oh my god. Someone else said, Someone, a stranger, told me at first interaction, you look like a doggy style kind of girl. What? That's so wrong. <laughs> Maybe the setting was in the club and they were high. Still, I don't think that's right to say to people. Interesting. I think the definition of wild varies from people to people. So okay. today our producers have prepared a game. It's called Wild or Mild. Wild, wild or mild. mild. There we go. The magic pink cup. Okay. Okay, I'll read the first one. This I can change language or not. So I must yeah. say, uh, if you say wild, you must say wild. It's mild, mild, mild. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, is this wild or mild? Air dropping a photo to a stranger. Or connecting your AirPods to a stranger's phone. What the f- Why would you do that? I've received airdrops like that before. I think I said right before, so. (laughs) (laughs) No, for what? Why would you connect your AirPods to a stranger's (laughs) phone? For fun, ah? 
Then you play your own voice recording. This is psychotic. <laughs> but what do you think? Is this wild or mild? Three, two, one. Mild. Wild. Mild. Wild or mild. <laughs> Meeting someone for the first time and saying, I don't like people who chew with their mouth open. Oh, this is one, two, three. Mild. mild. That's okay. I, I feel like that's okay. It's an EQ issue, but it's okay. <laughs> no, but they're not saying that that person was chewing with their mouth open. You're just telling yeah. that person. Maybe oh, you're yeah? sharing a pet yeah. piece. Like my right? ick, you know, my ick is oh, when people yeah? chew with their mouth open. Okay, next one. My Should ex we, did say go. that to me before. Huh? Yeah, he was like, you shouldn't chew with your mouth open. It's is that why he's your ex? Like, yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> but I chew my mouth toast these days. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> uh -uh. Ooh, sharing your kink with your match, like Tinder match or whatever. Hinge match within the first few lines of talking. Oh, I guess if you're just looking to bang, yeah. It's fine. Oh, it's kind of hot if you're just looking to bang, right? <laughs> you might as well put it on your profile then. I like to be tied up. Like, <laughs> <laughs> is okay. it wild or mild? Three, two, one. Mild. mild. Yeah, mild. I wouldn't say. There's more. There's more. This okay. is a fun game. Yeah, this <laughs> is fun. Okay, next. Oh, this is a very tiny slip of paper. So sustainable. Okay. Ooh! Why so small? Having sex on the first date. One, Wait, I have one, you guys done two. that? Never mind. Okay. <laughs> two, three, two, three, two, one. Wild. wild. <gasps> Wait. Mild? What did y'all say? I say wild. I said mild. You said mild, right? I said mild. Okay, 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 okay. It's a first date. What's wrong with that? Can la. Nothing is okay, wrong with right? that. Yeah, oh, it's but okay, you think it's, it's a okay. bit wild. Yeah, so how many dates would you wait? Go by few lah. Yeah, I must go by few. Uh, how many dates did you wait historically? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Calling you sexy is a pickup line. Well, like, Mala. hey, sexy. Tell me. I think it depends if that person is sexy or not. Because if the person is not sexy and you're calling me sexy, uh, it's kind of disgusting. <laughs> if you do it in like a pervy way, it's like, hey, sexy. Like. Oh my gosh. You know in Chinese, we have a saying, what? 人帥就好, 人醜性騷擾, which basically means when you're handsome, all is good. But if you're ugly, oh, it's sexual harassment. You're pretty privileged. <laughs> no, but beauty is subjective, Correct. right? Yes, it's like, do I you agree. think that person is sexy? They may be very sexy, but you think they're icky, then they're not, mm -hmm. right? Correct. So to me, this is mild. mild. Well, I realise we don't have many wild ones. Is that an us issue? Sorry. Yeah, I think so. Okay, listen to this next one, okay? Upon matching, you receive your match's nude picture of their pee-pee. Yeah, um, penis as their conversation starter. <laughs> Yo, this is rude, okay? This is a, it's a red yeah. flag. As red as my dress. Okay, oh. one amount. Three, two, one. Wild. Wild. Okay, wild. This wild. Oh, red flag. Red flag. That's a red flag. No, no, run. Okay. Oh, this is the last one. Hooking up with a stranger you've never met before. Can we move on? <laughs> yeah. So? So? <laughs> <laughs> now, while stories and jokes aside, I feel like sometimes talking to strangers can sometimes lead to very uncomfortable situations. And have you girls ever been in a situation where talking to stranger made you feel a bit like you're in danger? I generally enjoy mm. talking to strangers, especially yeah. if I'm alone, mm. because I like to know a bit more about their lives. But there comes a certain point in the conversation where, especially if let's say I'm a female, right? Or I'm solo traveling mm. and I'm having a conversation with a guy. There comes a point where it crosses the friendly line mm. yeah. and they think that there's something more there. And as a female, I think we're quite sensitive to these things. Yeah. And you kind of feel like you're a bit in danger. Like you should stop mm. this conversation now mm -hmm. before you give them the wrong idea. Correct. Or you get kidnapped mm. or chopped up. You know, whatever it is. Mm. I have a friend. She... Is very friendly with the people around her, right? So uh, one time she was out for a walk with uh, one of her neighbours around the neighbourhood. And it was their first time walking together. Just a friendly chit-chat session. And she told me that the neighbour started putting his arm around her, putting on the shoulder. And then at one point of the conversation, even slapped her butt. Okay, that's not right. So I think this is when she felt like, Ugh, this stranger is a bit dangerous. And she never went and walked with him after that. She should have called the police. I would have slapped his face. Really? No. Then he asked me why. Yeah, I said, eh, I thought we were playing Noah. <laughs> <laughs> not the slap game. <laughs> it's alright. Uh, but yeah, that's not nice, I feel. That's not polite. This story that happened, um, I think yeah, a lot of our listeners need to be careful, especially if you're on the younger side. Mm. This girl says, I was walking to the MRT at night and I was approached by a guy who looked like he's in his 20s. Mm. And he said, sorry. I just got distracted about how cute you are. Aww. Are you single? Mm. Right? So it was quite dark and she was very caught off guard and scared because she was alone. And she was afraid that if she said, oh, I have a boyfriend, he would react 
very badly and escalate the situation. So she lied and said, oh, I'm underage, oh, right? Because yeah. there's a higher chance that he would just not be into that. He ended up saying... No, no! He ended up saying, oh, what a pity. And then she freaked out and just went back to the MRT station. That's wild, eh? That he said, oh, it's a pity. It, no, yeah. no. The, the whole situation, that's actually very freaky. Like to go up to a stranger mm-hmm. at an MRT and be like, you're cute, are you single? Mm. I think there's certain situations where it's okay to meet strangers and hit on them. Mm-hmm. The MRT station is not one of them. Is it? But, okay, bar, yes. Okay. Okay. Club, sure. Mm-hmm. All right. Shopping mall. But let's think about it, right? <laughs> like, <clears throat> we've got technology now. Mm. But take it back like 50 years ago. Do you not think people pick people up from like oh, shopping malls, on the street? Train station, the street. That's a fair point. But like, back in those you... times, matchmaking was very popular, right? What if you see and you really like, like... And I feel like it's not every conversation with a stranger is bad, you know? There's of course many conversations with strangers that turn out well. For example, in my time in, I think, where, was, where did I go? A part of China, I forgot which part. There was a night market and I was just picking some cute little rings for myself. And right beside me, there was another lady picking rings for herself as well. And we had exchanged opinions on, oh, this ring looks great on you, that looks great on you, you should buy this, buy that. And then we ended up, the next day, going to visit like this mountain together. Oh, it was cute. so beautiful. Okay, also because the fact that she's a lady, it really sets me at ease. It feels safer. Yeah, and because she's Chinese, right? So she brought me around and she showed me oh. all the things that tourists wouldn't have seen. So that was nice. Yeah, I got a story. Yeah. yeah. I was on a plane. Oh. And then, <laughs> you know, I made friends everywhere, right? Mm-hmm. So there was this woman. So basically, my seat is here. She's a seat away from me. So no one here. She's there. Mm-hmm. Long flight. We start talking and we talking friendly, right? Okay. And then uh, I landed and we say bye-bye. Then I landed and I realized that I had been robbed. <gasps> And I was in a position, right, where the sitting arrangement was such that it couldn't have been anyone else but her. What in the world? What, what did, did she, she you? take? Money, money, cash. How much? Uh, not much lah. Maybe I had like three, four hundred. That's a lot of money from your wallet. Sing dollars? In yes, yes. It was in, in my bag. bag. Oh, in your bag. Yeah. Whoa. Well, and your bag was under the seat. Or do you? My put it- bag is usually under the seat, and I think at that point because long flights, right? If I sleep and all that nonsense, usually I like hoop it around my leg, you know. Yeah. Or if you had gone to the toilet, it would be the perfect Possibly. timing for her to take the cash. Only the cash? Yes, only the cash. Oh my goodness. What a bitch. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> I guess sometimes, you know, stranger danger is real. Stranger danger. I mean, at the end of the day, I think talking to strangers, you know, there can be good things that come out mm-hmm. of it, but you mm. always have to be very careful. Like this next one, right? It's supposed to be a wholesome encounter, but I don't know if I see it. Let me tell okay. you girls. You okay. guys see, okay? So a man was staring at me on the MRT for the whole first half of my ride. Maybe like 20 minutes. Okay. Right? And then proceeded to swap seats to sit beside me midway. There were a lot of seats available. Mm. Okay. So sits next to me. This girl was very creeped out. But then thankfully, she says, he started talking about his life and started to ask her out to play like badminton, which was pretty wholesome. Well, I wouldn't even have engaged in that conversation if I was this girl. Do you think it's double standards? Let's say, right, you see this TikTok of this person and let's say this guy, she already saw him and she already found him cute. And then he moves seats and all that. You wouldn't call it creepy, you know what I mean? Uh, if it's a girl it's like, towards guy, is it? If it's flipped. Mm. No. If the same thing was going on, but the girl already noticed him and found him cute, Oh. And then he starts like swapping seats and all that. You wouldn't oh. call it creepy, you know what I mean? That's true. But in the case that Jimmy just mentioned, actually there were some comments thanking the girl for being brave and kind enough to interact with the man because we don't know what the man had gone through in life. So instead of reacting harshly like normal people would, yeah. she was mm. kind enough to talk mm. to him. But maybe that's, that's also how life. you end up kidnapped. That's how you end up in the hands of a serial killer. Oh, man. I think what guys need to understand is that girls have been through a lot in life where we always feel like there's some sort of danger present. You Mm -hmm. can't just go up to a girl on the MRT and try to ask her to play badminton. Like, it's it's massive red flags for me. Mm. You know what I mean? Okay, but then like, Guys, right, I think it happens to them a lot where they see a girl and they want to chat up. Mm -hmm. They're already afraid, right? Yeah. And then they know that we don't react very well to it. So how can they do it in a pleasant manner? In an MRT? In a random place? I think it would be cute to just slip her a note. 
and say, hey, I think you're really cute. If you would like to connect, here's my Instagram. Mm. That would be polite. But if respectful. the guy is coming up to you and like pass you a note, would, wouldn't you be like freaked out also? No, just take it and mm. that's the end, right? Now read it after. Yeah, correct. So if I were the guy, I would pass the note to the girl right before I alight. Oh, please take this. And then I go off. So she doesn't feel traumatised or awkward, right? Imagine the guy still standing there. Yeah. I yeah, think in weird. this story, it was the staring at the girl. Yeah, that's that creepy. Was but also, the guy could just be socially awkward, right? I mean, that's, that's also true. another, yeah. Okay, here's another wholesome story. So this girl online says that she was taking a long bus ride home from school and honestly, only because her phone was about to run out of battery, she decided to have a conversation with an auntie who was sitting right beside her. And she complimented the auntie's nails, which brought a huge smile to the auntie's face. That was so sweet. And from then, the conversation went on. The auntie told her about all her successful grandchildren that she misses dearly. Aww. And the girl had said that oh, this interaction made her think about her grandparents and serves as a reminder to visit her grandparents ASAP. Aww. That's so sweet, yeah? I love that. Mm. I think one of my favourite things to do is to compliment strangers. Mm -hmm. Just because... You'll never see them again. Yeah. Like, yeah. So what's the harm of giving them something that makes, makes their day a little yeah. bit better? Makes yeah. their day Correct. better, right? So here's the question. If someone were to step out of their house today, would you encourage them to talk to a stranger or not? It depends on how much EQ you have. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. how much EQ the other person has, right? No, if you have good emotional intelligence and you know that and also IQ, and you realise that, okay, this is not a situation in which you should be engaging with strangers, mm. like in the back alley of somewhere, mm. middle of the night, mm. then yalla, right? I think there's still good things that can come out of talking to strangers, like for Azura's case, you know, learning about someone's life, mm. and then being able to tell it on Hush Podcast. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> I think, when you think about like people who like to travel, like travel solo and stuff like that, they always mention about like meeting people, you know, interacting with people, but why do we not do it like on the daily you know what i mean mm. why do we feel the need to only do it when we're traveling like suddenly we want to open ourselves up to other people's lives when we're traveling like when you could do it on the daily in little small doses you know mm, fair mm. point and i think the human touch is something ai cannot replace mm. the human interaction it's just different talking to someone face to face versus you know you're on a platform chatting people up absolutely i totally believe that and if you are someone who struggles like in social situations right talking to strangers can help you open up yourself mm. you know, to more social situations. Because sometimes with friends, family, you feel like there's a higher level of judgment there. Mm. But with a stranger, like you said, you're never going to see them again. Yeah. Some tips if you would like to engage in conversations with strangers. I think complimenting them is a very good way to start a conversation. Um, asking questions, finding a common topic. In Singapore, we always like to talk about the weather, the food. All these are great ways to start a conversation. Yeah, absolutely. All if right. you spot a similarity between yourself and the person, I think that's a very nice mm -hmm. way to start as well. Yeah, I like idea of being friendly with neighbours, mm. right? I feel like we've lost that a lot yeah. in Singapore. Mm. That whole like kampong spirit, yep. right? Where when you see a neighbour, just smile at them. Start with a smile, right? Mm. Don't start with an hour-long conversation and mm. your neighbour is like, fuck, I want to leave. <laughs> <laughs> just start with a smile. Like, oh, your plants look good today. Yeah, like, be yeah. nice. Um, so my parents, uh, we recently have a change of neighbours. Okay. So an Indian family has shifted in beside my parents' place now. Mm. And apparently one of them works in the hotel. So she always comes home with like a huge bag of bihun. I oh, just yummy. give it to my mom. Oh! Like you say, the Indian lady will say, oh, I just picked this up from the hotel today. It's fresh, you know. Use it to cook whatever you want. And my mom will be like so happy. Oh, and during so like cute. occasions, my mom will give stuff back to them. And I think that's so sweet, isn't it? I love that. Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, there was once my mother was cooking in the kitchen and then uh, the neighbour downstairs uh, comes up. They sort of know each other. Why are you cooking? Uh? It's not very nice. Can't <laughs> <laughs> and your mom would be very generous. Would give it to them. Give lah! Aww, Aww, that's so nice. I love that. All in all, at the start of the episode, we talked about a lot of wild conversations, but it's heartening to know that, you know, some conversation with strangers can also be wholesome. So we hope that, you know, after this episode, we can all start being nice to each other, even to people we don't know. Yeah. You never know what someone's going through. Mm -hmm. So just be nice. That's right. On that note, please follow us on Instagram at itscleverty.co for more of our other episodes. That's right. You can listen to us on Listen, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, turn on your notifications. And we're on YouTube as well. Well, and we'll catch you next time. Thank you so much for tuning in. We Bye. love you. Bye. It's like when I logged into my Spotify on Hazy's <laughs> iPad and then I completely forgot about it. And then one day I was on my phone and then it popped up. So I was like, I'm not listening to Spotify. And then it says, make out jams. I was like, who is she making out with? <laughs> Thank you for that <laughs> night, Azura. Thank you. <laughs> 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 <laughs>